Ouch. So here we go. So question, so 1.1, question number one. They're giving us this little graph thing. Maybe I can make that bigger. And they want me to find the coordinates of that point. Yeah. Okay, so they want me to find the coordinates of that dot. So they're basically getting us warmed up with using graphing calculators. So, um, so how would you find the coordinates <coughs> excuse me, of that dot? Look at the x min and the x max. See what they're doing on the x-axis there? This, this is the x-axis. This is the y, as you know. And they're saying the x min is negative 10. That means right here, right here, is negative 10. And the max is positive. That means right here is positive 10, right? And the y min down here, the y-axis minimum is negative 5. The y max, the, the y, biggest y is positive 5. So what does that mean? Then let's think about the jumps. How many jumps? Starting from the middle, there's one jump, two jumps, three jumps, four jumps, five jumps to get out to 10. So how far is each of those jumps? They must be going by twos, huh? Yeah. So this must be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative. So the x-axis must be going by twos. What about the y-axis? That's just going by ones. Huh? 1. Two, three, four, five, and then the negatives on down. So, what's the coordinate to this point? Remember, it's x, then y. Negative eight, up three, I think. Looks like negative eight, three. Good on that. So, just how you would read a graphing calculator screen. They're just making sure you set all the x mins and x maxes and y mins and y maxes. All right. So, this is. More graphing calculator stuff. They're just saying, hey, if you if you have if you need these points to be viewable, to be on your graphing calculator screen, which one, you know, this this setup or this setup or this setup or this setup, which of those setups is gonna be because you do set up the screen whenever you use a graphing calculator and you look at a graph, you tell the screen how far the left edge should be, how far the right edge, how far the bottom, how far the top, how big the window should be for viewing. So suppose you know that you need to view these points. So which setup is basically wide enough and tall enough to include those points? Yeah, just and not these guys, huh? Because this one only has a minimum x value of negative 5, whereas we have an x, remember it's always x and then y. X and then Y, X and then Y. We have an X value of negative 14. So this isn't low enough, this isn't low enough, and that isn't low enough. Only this window is big enough to cover all those points. So that's the answer on that one. Okay, so they're giving me this window, and they're saying, okay, what's the X min and the X max and the X scale? So what's the x min? Can you can you spot that? Negative three. Yeah, right here. Oh, x, x min, so negative twelve, and this is the x max, positive twelve. Now, what's the scale? What do they mean by scale? The jump amount. They mean you know from from mark to mark, what's the jump? Yeah. So starting from the middle, it's a jump of one, two, three, four jumps to get to twelve. So each one's three, huh? So this must be. 3, 6, 9, 12, huh? 3, 6, 9, 12. So the scale is 3. So that's what the scale is when you set the scale. And you can do the same thing on the y-axis. I'll just move right along if that's okay with you. So number 9 here, determine which of the given points are on the graph. So they're giving me an equation, y equals x squared minus the square root of x. And they want, they want me to tell them if negative 1, 2 is on the graph or not. So is negative 1, 2 on the graph? We're not going to look at the graph or see any pictures or anything. How do I know, if I'm not seeing a picture, whether the point negative 1, 2 is going to be on the graph of that equation or not? You put it in the equation. Plug it in, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just really plug it in. See if it makes the left side equal the right side. If it makes them equal, it's good. If it doesn't, it's not, right? That's the membership requirement for being a dot on a graph because a graph's like a big light bright, and all the lights light up whose x, y coordinate make the equation true. So you just say, okay, this is x, this is y, 
plug in for x there and there and plug in for y there and see if it's true. So 2 does it equal. And when you plug in, you're supposed to put parentheses around the things you plug in. I mean, you don't have to, but, but right there it's important. So it's good so far. I plugged in negative 1 for x in both spots and 2 for y. And then I'm just going to work it out and see if it's true or not. This would be well, negative 1 squared is positive 1, right? Now, these two negatives, can they cancel? No, actually, you can't do that when they're separated by a square root. What, what, is, the, what is the square root of negative 1? Uh, yeah, it's imaginary, huh? It's, it's, not, it's not real. You can do it in your calculator. It's air. Because there's no number times itself that's negative 1. You know what I mean? Like, if you take the square root of 9, it's 3. Why? Because 3 times itself is 9. That's what square root asks, huh? It says, what times itself is this thing? So what times itself is 9? 3. So then what times itself is negative 1? Nothing. You can't take the square root of a negative. There's nothing times itself that's ever going to come out negative. Even a negative times itself, negative times negative, is positive. It's not negative. It's impossible. Question or comment? You're just going to say that same thing? Yeah. So, so therefore, this is not true, right? 2 does not equal 1 minus imaginary. <laughs> what is 1 minus imaginary? Well, it's imaginary. It's not, it's not not real. It's not two. So that one's no. So the first one is not true. How about the second one? How about, the, let's try the next one. Two, negative one. Same thing. Plug into the equation. X squared minus square root. So this is X. This is Y. Plug in. So negative one is X squared. I don't think that's true either, is it? That'd be four minus the square root of two. I don't know what that is, but it's not negative one. So that one's no. Well, how about zero, zero? Yeah, that's the only one that's going to work, huh? So lastly, we do zero, zero for x and y. Again, plugging into y equals x squared minus square root of x. So plug in zero for x and zero for y. That's true. Zero equals zero. So that was the only one that's true. So we would select b, only zero, zero. Only zero, zero is on that graph. The other two points would not be on the graph. They would not be part of the picture. Good? Easy enough? Sure, I show this and put it back over here. Yeah. So, so again, this this point is four zero, and this point is minus four zero, and there's no y-intercept. Doesn't hit the y-axis at all. Good on that. Going quick. Or I guess they just want them all. Let me let me let me do that one. Yeah. So, good question. It's showing that graph, and all, all it says is list the intercepts, so that would include x and y intercepts. So let's do that. So we've got to do this point first off. What's the coordinates of that dot? Negative five. Yeah, back 5, up 0. And then this dot, negative 1, zero. Negative one zero. And then this dot, which is a y-intercept, but they did ask for all the intercepts. It's zero, one. 0, 1. And then this dot, huh? Six zero. Yeah, they want, and you just want a comma, so you would go any order. Doesn't matter what order you put them in, but you want to put commas between each set of parentheses, right? Use a comma to separate them. Yeah, and six zero. That's what they want, like that. Good. So we have y equals x minus two. Do you remember how to graph straight lines? First off, um, how about this? Why, why would that equation be a straight line? What, why does this equation, y equals x minus 2, do, do you know right away, why, why, why can you know right away that it's going to be a straight line graph? I mean, obviously, we have the answer. That, that's helpful. But if we didn't have the answer sitting right there, how would we know that it's a straight line instead of, like, having curvature in it? The no powers. no powers, yeah. If you had x squared, for example, that'd be a U shape. And, you know, anytime you have higher powers on the x's or the y's, that's what starts bringing the bending into the graphs. Or if you have weird stuff like absolute values or square roots or anything like that, that's what makes graphs start to curve around. So we don't have any of that. We just have x and y first power. So that means it's going to be a straight line. We call that a linear equation because the graph's a line. So, okay, so we know it's a straight line. Well, how do you get that straight line now? Well, if you know it's a straight line, that means you only need two dots, right? Real simple. Whereas if it's curved and stuff, you need a lot more than two dots. But if it's a straight line, all you need is two dots. How do we get those two dots? There's a million ways. Plug in this 
yeah, you can plug, you can make a little XY table and plug in and stuff. I think it's real easy to just one super easy way is just to start with whatever numbers off to the right. When 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 y is alone and y is alone here. When y is alone, you could just start over here. That's down two in the middle. So if you're doing the graph, you go okay. Just go down two in the middle, right there. There's the there's one of the dots halfway there. I only need one more dot. How do you find the other dot? Do you remember how to use the slope? Yeah. What is the slope on this one? Yeah, there's nothing here, so it's 1 over 1. You with me on that? Because 1 over 1 is just 1, and 1 times x is still just x. So I haven't changed anything. I call that plastic surgery. Remove the wrinkles, but it, it, it looks different, but it's still the same as it was. We do that all the time in math. Right? Why am I putting that 1 over 1 there? Well, I didn't change anything. I just made it look different, right? 1 over 1 is just 1, and 1 times x is still just x. It's still just x. But now I've got two numbers that I can work with to help me be able to graph because I need a rise and I need a run. That's the slope. So we do that all the time in math. We're sticking things in different places to help us do what we need to do that don't really change it. They just make it look different to help us out. So that means from here you go up 1, over 1, remember all that from algebra? Mm -hmm. Rise over run. So from your first dot of negative to go up 1 over 1, that's another dot. Connect the dots, you got your line. So that's one easy way. You could also make an XY table, plug in stuff. All right. Points there. Okay, so, so yeah, so again, how I did this, when they told me, they gave me X is negative 2, you could just take that, take Y equals 4X minus 1 and just plug in that negative 2. That's what I was talking about. And you get negative 8 minus 1, you get negative 9. So that made the point negative 2, negative 9, which is right there, back to down 9. So that's all they're wanting you to do on this problem. They, and then they're going to do another one. Okay, now do x equals 0. So if I do x equals 0, plug in the 0, the, what, what y value will go with the x value 0? It comes out negative 1, huh? Mm -hmm. So that means that's the point 0, negative 1, which is going to be right there, isn't it? Over 0, down 1. And on you go. So they just want you to make sure, they just want to make sure you can plug into an equation, find some dots, put the dots on the graph. That's all they're doing on number 17 here. They're giving me y equals x squared minus 5. Do you know x squared is always a U shape? Whenever you have x squared, it's always a u-shape. And, it, and if you have positive, really nothing, in front of the x squared, which means positive, that means it's a u-shape going up. If you have negative in front of the x squared, it's a u-shape going down. So really, having said that, we already know what the answer is, huh? It's, uh, I guess they don't really have letters, but I assume you mean this one. Yeah, that's the right one. Yeah, it's a U-shape going up. But anyway, what if they were being a little more tricky than that and we had to be more discerning? How would we find out that that's actually the right one? You could, you could just plug in some points. You could just make a little XY table. And you could plug, when you make an XY table, you can plug in anything you want there. You could put in 0, 1, just because they're easy numbers. If you put in 0, you're going to get Y equals 0 squared minus 5, which is negative 5. If you plug in 1, you're going to get 1 squared minus 5, which is negative 4, like that. And, and that's probably enough points right there. Let's see. Over 0, down 5. 1, 2, 3. Whoop, I, better, I better change my graph so I have room there. So that would be over 0, down 5, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. Over 0, down 5. And then over 1, down 4. And you can already see it's, it's going to go like this. And the, the other side would do the same thing if you plugged in more points. So yes, indeed, that's the right answer. So just do enough dots to where you can tell which one's right. Make sense? All right. You guys seem to all be giving the, me the, I, I've got it, Mr. Harris. So Sign there. All right. So y equals minus x squared plus 5. They want me to plug in x is negative 3. Do you know when you plug into a formula, you always want to put parentheses? It, it, it doesn't really matter unless the thing's negative, that, so it will matter here. So when you plug in that negative 3 to the formula, 
Make sure you put parentheses around the negative 3 as you do so. So I'll put parentheses and plug it in right there. So there's the minus that's already on the outside, and then the minus 3 that's being plugged in the x slot. We good so far? And then that's going to be positive 9 once it's squared, right? Negative 3 times negative 3. Two negatives make positive. And then that other negative in the end makes it negative, huh? So it ends up being negative 9 plus 5, which is negative 4 when all is said and done. You okay with all those signs? I just wanted to work out the signs there. Make sure you're able to track carefully with the signs. So that would be the point. Negative 3 for x led to the y value, negative 4. So you put that on the graph. Back 3, down 4. Where is it? Back 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, 4 right here. Sort of. Best I can tell. It's like minus... No, I, I'm off a little. I made it close enough. Back three, down four. There it is. Good. And then it looks like they have eight other parts remaining. <laughs> so they want you to do a lot of plugging in. Sorry, that's a Okay, so we have minus 2x plus 3y is minus 6. So it's... Uh, is it going to be one of these U shapes, or is it going to be one of the straight lines? Straight line. Yeah, we know it's a straight line because it's just X and Y to the first power, regular X and regular Y, huh? So, okay. You can, you can just plug in points. You can just make a table plug in points if you want to. I think it's probably easier to get Y alone. I'll just do that method, but any, I never care what method you use on a test. As long as you get the right answer, I'm happy. So I'm going to do the get Y alone first because it's usually a little easier. Get Y alone first. So, to get y alone, and then I'll just do the two points thing. So, to get y alone, what do I do? Add the 2x. Yeah, add the 2x to both sides like that. And so, that's 3y equals. And, and those, those cannot subtract. You can't go 2 minus 6 because if, if that 6 had an x, then I could subtract them, right? But... It doesn't, so they're unlike terms, so they stay separated. You, you don't have to put the A. You could write 6 minus 2x. That's okay. It's not wrong or anything. It's usually traditional to put the x in the front. We're just used to it that way, but you don't have to. And next step to get y alone, what am I going to do? Divide by 3. Yeah, all the way, right? All the way across when you divide, all three of them like that. And um, what do we got? 2 thirds, two thirds x minus and 6 over 3. Is just 2. All right, so now that we've got y alone, we can graph. We start here, remember? That's, that's where our first dot is. And that first dot is always on the midline, isn't it? The y-axis. So down 2 on the middle line. That's your first dot. Always, you know, once you get y alone, start there. And then you know about the other stuff. This is rise over run. I don't have to put in invisible ones this time not needed. We've got numbers there. So that means go up from this dot, go up two over three. There's your second dot. Connect the dots. So it must be that one, huh? Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Remember all that from algebra? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. No questions. I flash off that. So we've got 4x squared plus 9y is 36. They want me to graph it. First off, is it going to be one of the straight lines or one of the U-shapes? U-shapes. Hey, you know it's a U-shape, so we're, we're down to two options. So um, I would probably get y alone again. You don't have to, but yeah, yeah it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But pro probably it's, I'll do that. First, get y alone. That's probably... Good way to do it. So I'll subtract the 4x squared from both sides like that. So it's gone there. And this is 9y is minus 4x squared plus 36. Good so far. And then you got to finish getting y alone. So divide by 9 like that. <coughs> y equals minus 4, 9, 6 squared, plus 36 divided by 9 four. is 4. Good to there, so I got y alone. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, 
can you already tell which answer it is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That negative four ninths, negative on the x squared, mm-hmm. that, that tells you it's going down. It's a U shape going down, so it's that answer. So we have enough information to figure the answer right now. If, if there was a couple of U shapes going down and you needed a couple of dots to know which one is right, you could make, a, you could make an XY chart at this point and plug in anything you want. Question? Yeah, it's um, it's not a slope. It's 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 just a, but it's we're gonna in a in a week or two we'll talk about what things like that do to graphs. That multiply factor is a compression expansion factor. So it's like a half, four ninths is about a half. So it means it means it vertically shrinks the thing about a half, and the negative flips it. So it takes the normal U shape and it crunches it and flips it. That's what it's technically doing. We'll get into all that in a week or two. So you don't have to know all that right now. So I'm just going to plug in the X is zero. Just Because all we have to do on this is multiple choice, right? They're just kind of getting our feet wet right now. They're just getting us, we're just, we're just getting our feet wet, just kind of warming up to graphs. So just, you know, without all the fancy stuff, just plug in X is zero. What are you going to get? Negative four ninths times zero squared plus four. Y just comes out four. So that's over zero up four. So one, two, three, four, it's right there. And you know it's going down because of the negative. So, so there we go. So anyway, we already, we already had enough information. I'm just giving you a little more information. Is that good? Mm-hmm. They, so, what, so they're taking this equation, and they're saying y equals 4x minus 21. They're, and they're saying, what are the y-intercepts? So did you know to find intercepts, you plug in zero for the other letter? I'm running out of time. I'll explain that. We have three or four minutes left. So to find a y-intercept, plug in x, zero. And over here, they're going to ask me to change the color. They're going to ask me to, to find... An x-intercept, same, same equation, y equals 4x minus 21. So I'm going to plug in y is 0. Okay, and I'll show you why in a second. Let me just say that's the rule. You might know why already, but I'll show graphically why in just a second. Let's first just crank it out. So that is the rule. Whenever, and that goes on through calculus and any graph you'll ever do, to find intercepts, to find an x-intercept, make y zero. To find a y-intercept, make x zero. You always make the opposite letter zero. So you take the equation and you plug in zero right there for x, and y will just come out minus 21. And then over here, you plug the zero in for y. This one will be a little more work. So you get um, zero equals 4x minus 21. Because I put zero in for y. I've got to solve for x. So add 21 to both sides. So 21 equals 4x, divide by 4, x is 21 fourths. Everybody good with that? So again, to find an intercept, you make the opposite letter 0. Find an x-intercept, make y 0, y-intercept, make x 0. Why? Because that's what it means to be an intercept. Let me show you. What if I have, um, let me just do some, where is this line? Um, x is way over here, so it's like a dot way over there, and a dot way down there. Okay, it's, it looks like this. So notice this is the point over 0 down 21. This is the point over 21 fourths up 0. Do you see that this right here, for example, is, is where it's hitting the y axis? And notice his x value is 0, huh? That's just what it means. When you're a dot on the y axis, your right and left is 0, huh? You're right in the middle. So your x value is 0. So your opposite letter is 0. And when you're on the x-axis, your y-coordinate is zero. That's just what it means to be on the x-axis. So that's much what.